Grapple is a parkour game created by the game dev Bargy, and he uploaded the game to the Steam store on the 21st of March 2022. Shortly after, a group of us players decided to create a speedrun.com page for the game, and this video will serve as a guide to you newcomers who need help learning the basics. So I hope this video serves you guys well as a guide for getting into Grapple speedrunning, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. The Bush Dash is a very basic glitch found by my close friend and fellow runner Just Zectro. He found this glitch on day one and used it to submit an impressive first run to the leaderboards. Since then, this glitch has been used in many strategies and a few levels shown next. The Bush Dash, despite being called the Bush Dash, can be used on any sloped surface that isn't, for example, wall runnable, walkable, things like that. Performing this trick is quite easy, you just need to go up to the sloped surface and dash immediately before you hit the surface. Doing so against a steep enough object will grant you insane upward speed. This can't really be used for horizontal speed, we found, but this is an amazing way of getting a lot of height quickly, as shown in level 2 and 3 runs. The reason we perform this glitch is normally to get above the invisible barriers which are all around all the levels. This glitch is especially useful in levels 2 and 3, as they have invisible barriers which block off the exit unless you take a less direct path, and so by going over the walls you can immediately get to the exit as fast as possible. Now, without going too deep into the game's mechanics, the pole glitch essentially allows you to build up an insane amount of speed at the start of levels. Uh, technically, this could maybe be done elsewhere in some levels, but it's not useful in those scenarios as it takes a while to set up, so it's good for single level runs where you can build up a lot of speed quickly before the timer even starts. Now, this glitch by far is the one I get the most questions about, as most people see the speedruns using this strategy and they don't understand how it works. Um, because without a uh, no board and on-screen uh, keyboard display, it's very hard to understand. So the simplest explanation I have to get this to work is to lodge yourself behind the post at the start of the game. This could be any of the posts, um, depending on which angle you do it from, as some of them won't let you get to a certain angle without setting off the timer too early. Um, but you're going to want to lodge yourself behind one of these posts um, and then constantly grapple while dashing over and over and over. And this will build up a lot of speed, and then if you can slip out by either moving, or just by building up enough speed that you get flung out of the pole, uh, this will give you a massive amount of speed, up to 50 speed, in some cases more, but it'll automatically be brought down to 50 speed, because that's the maximum velocity of the game. This can be done in the game by default, however it is much easier using uh, external tools that we use on the speedruns, like uh, Power Tools by Windows, which lets you well, among many other things, you can rebind your keys to do separate actions. So, for example, I have my F and G keys bound to shift. So whenever I press the F or G key, the keyboard or the computer will register that as a me pressing shift. Um, I'll put up an on-screen graphic. It'll be in paint, so it'll be absolutely dog shit. But another great tool used is X mouse. Uh, I haven't used it personally, but I know that other people have got the same results with it. Um, which simply lets you rebind the, well, in a similar way to power tools, lets you rebind the mouse instead of the keyboard to do different actions. Um, so in my case, I use Razor Synapse instead of uh, X Mouse, and I rebind my up scroll and down scroll to both be bound to the mouse one button. With these tools combined, this lets me very easily just scroll up and down constantly while spamming the F and G keys to grapple and ungrapple constantly while also dashing constantly. Now, level 1 uses the same pole dash method as before. Now, depending on how much height you get and where you end up in the level after your dash, you may need to uh, move yourself a little using the grapple on one of the beams, for example. This isn't always the case, sometimes you can get straight to the mushroom, but I, it's not very reliable and you may need to grapple here and there, as I do in my world record. As shown on screen, level 2 also uses the pole dash method, however there is a lot more routing required here, so it's not just dash and then go straight ahead. Once you've done the dash, you're going to need to find your way around the level to the exit. Um, the best pathing we've found so far is shown on screen, but um, it's probably optimizable as this was taken in a few attempts. So. 
Now, level three uses the old level two method where you would use the bush dash to get over the invisible walls as there are two in level three. You need to get over one at the start and one just towards the end. Um, it is worth noting here that the um, goalposts for each level have a very high hitbox. You can hit them way before you even are anywhere near them, really. But in this run, you need to get over to the rock shown in the video, and then normally we bounce or jump uh, just before we hit the rock and do the bush dash, as that gives us more height uh, after doing the dash. Now, level 4 is slightly different. It still uses the pole dash, but you use the first pole above you to gain all your speed, and then once you believe you have enough speed, you use the top pole to launch yourself up uh, into the goal. From here, it's pretty straightforward. Use your glider to get the rest of the way to the goal, and you will finish your run. Level 4 is a bit more complicated, we use another glitch here we found where you can get essentially a super jump from the poles in the level by jumping and holding jump or pressing jump again at the right moment. Honestly, at the moment we found the best way to do this is just throw yourself at the pole and hold jump and just keep trying this over and over until you get the jump. Once you've got this boost upwards, you're going to need to grapple to the pole nearest to you, then grapple on the bottom of the wall on your left so that you can get downward speed again, then hit the mushroom and then grab the top of the pole again to pull yourself up even further and now you'll have massive upward speed and then pull out your glider to get the rest of the way there. You will need to use the hook though. Level 6, very simply, is another pole dash on the left, I think normally. And then we grapple onto the chains just to make our way over to the goal easily. You may need to use a glider at the end again just to get the rest of the distance, but aside from that it's pretty simple. Now level 7 is again a pole dash, uh, under the first bar, under the second bar, but grappling on the second bar to fly most of the way to the exit, and then grappling on the final bar just to get the rest of the way there. Now I will admit, level 8 is probably the hardest of the single level runs, just because of how precise you need to be, and the timing needs to be dead right. But essentially you do the pole dash again, and you will go over the first bar, I believe, and then use the second bar to get up, as well as one of the rocks on the roof. And then the rest of it is just simple manoeuvring and timing with the axes. Uh, you may need to restart this many times just to make sure you line up with the axes correctly in the you know swing phase, um, but aside from that, it's simple. Again, level 9 will be the pole dash using the rock on the roof, shown in the video and then using the second pole, I believe, to get most of the way there, um, and then I think there's another pole we use at the end just to get the rest of the distance to the goal. For the wood section runs in Grapple, we use a combination of the current strat for level 1 and the current strat for level 3, and then the old strat for level 2 as it was it's faster in full game runs essentially. You'll see in just a sec in the level 2 part of this run that they will use a bush dash on the bush on the left or the right, um, normally the left I believe is more common nowadays, um, to fly over the invisible wall and hit the level 2 barrier. I'll let the rest of this run play out for you guys so you can see how it goes. And just as a bit of info, the run shown in the background is Jedix's world record at the moment of 30 seconds uh, real time. Now currently the desert runs for Grapple use the current world record run of the level 4 strat, and then they use a different variation of level 5 and 6. Sometimes you can use the regular level 5 one, but the one shown in the video should be slightly faster for level 5 in the desert runs. Level 6 uses a pretty simple strategy, um, as you can't don't have time to do the pole dash method setup, um, and so it simply just grapples over to the exit. Uh, and I'll show the rest of the video again here, and the video playing is Jedex's world record of 30 seconds and 300 milliseconds.
Again, the ice category runs for grapple use the original, or sorry, the current world record strategies for the first level of the run, so level 7, and then for level 8 and 9 they take a simpler approach, just simply going through the level as you normally would, um, well, as fast as possible still. Um, and the background is Jedix's run, which is a 32 276, um, which is the world record currently. I'll let this play out. Now the Roger runs are done in the same way the Woods are done, except you will tag on level 4 and 5. Level 4 you'll do slightly differently because you can't do the pole dash at the start, so you have to do it in a slightly different way. And then level 5 will do in a different way to get to Roger instead of finishing the level. Uh, the best route for that, well, we don't know at the moment, but one is shown in the video, which is by Jedix, and it's a 54-300, and it's the current world record. I'll let this play out. Now the Shrigma run is essentially the same as the Roger run, it's the woods section, except without doing level 4 and 5, you'll just do level 4 instead. And you'll do the woods section as normal, and then once you get to level 4, you'll take a slightly different path to get to behind the pyramid and inside it, which is where Roger is hiding, or Shrigma instead. Um, and this world record is by Jedix, it's playing in the background, and it's a 45-900, I'll let this play out. Now put very simply, a full game run is all the levels, so you will do the woods run, and then every level after will be a slower because you can't do the pole dash at the start, um, but still as fast as possible run. And every run will be shown in the video in the background, which is Jedix's 141-100, uh, 1 minutes, 41 seconds, 100 milliseconds, um, which is the current RTA world record. Uh, the in-game time is 127 flat. Um, which is a very impressive time to be fair, it was set recently, um, but I'll let his video play out. I would also like to say that um, a lot of these runs are very beatable, so, uh, mainly the um, section runs and the full game runs, as well as the Roger and Shrugma runs, as they haven't been grinded out too heavily, uh, and they're fairly new in comparison. Everyone grinded out the, um, the single level strategies because they're faster and easier to do, um, but these are full with um, you know little inconsistencies that could be easily improved upon, and. Uh, new strategies we haven't found yet, so if anyone wants to give it a go, come join, uh, we're more than welcome to, what, what the hell am I saying, we're more than welcome to help, um, check the discord, check the speedrun.com site for any guides, news, resources, etc. Uh, we do have a live split auto splitter function, which is simply split at the end of every level for you, um, and start the run automatically for you on the timer, um, that can also be found on the speedrun.com page, uh, and yeah, uh, that's basically it for the video, thank you guys for watching, and I'll let this play out.